guys, welcome to another exciting episode of Millennial Talk. And this week, we are going to be looking into an, another exciting topic still in the entrepreneurship opportunities for millennial in arts. Of course, last week we started with um, entrepreneurship opportunities for, for millennials and we looked at photography. And now we're going to dive into the arts. And when I say arts, I'm talking about painting, you know, the creative arts. I mean, all of them are creative arts, but they are, you know, creative in different dimensions. Well, today we're live at Mossad God Studios, and I'm sitting right here with the CEO of Mossad God Studios, and his name is Mossad Oluwa Washington. Nice to have you today. <laughs> when you use the word CEO, I just be like, God, CEO. <laughs> That means I have, I have <laughs> different directors. But, uh, I'm kind of curious as to why a lot of people are being, uh, they are, are scared, especially when people start up businesses, they are scared to be called CEOs. I mean, you're the owner of the business, so automatically yeah. that makes you the CEO. Oh, uh, true. Um, but for the visual heart, it's a bit tricky. Okay. So uh, when when you when you say entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. like an entrepreneur, it's not as direct. As mm -hmm. it seems, because mm -hmm. we still have other bodies who promote us okay. as an artist, you get okay. so. But but for the studio part of us, how we run the studio, what mm -hmm. we do mostly is to create. Create. Then we we have channels of people that that helps us with with sales, okay. promotional offers, and the like. So okay. that's when you said like, see you. I just like. Ah. <laughs> I'm just an artist. Yeah. I'm okay, just a so, visual artist. So maybe artist. we should rephrase. Maybe we should call you a creative director. Thank you very much. I, I, a creative that, that would director. Be the best. Okay. Like, that would be the best. Okay. All right, Mr. Wash. Um, so basically, just introduce yourself. Tell us a bit about yourself. Um, my name is Washington Masadilua. I'm a visual artist, um, a creative director, a crazy one. Um, I paint. Um, before I go there, um, I'm, I'm a former, both former and informal artist because um, I, f I finished from Federal College of Education, Akoka, where I was trained as a teacher mm -hmm. and as an artist. But, but then I had to like step up my game. So further my education in Junilag, where I studied painting strictly. Okay. I'm presently doing my master's in Ife, also in painting. So uh, basically I just, I just love um, painting, talking about people's stories, even the untold stories. So for me, this is all about Washington Versailles. I just want to, I just want to see, I just want to say these things that people want to say, but they don't know how to say. Okay. So I'm, I'm bringing it out through my heart. Yeah. Okay. So you're using your, your, your art to express people's Thank feelings people's, and emotions. Even mine, not just people's okay. alone, even mine. So okay. that's it basically. All right. Yeah. Okay, so um, what are your thoughts on the entrepreneurship rate in, in Nigeria and even across the globe? The globe. And um, what do you think, that, how, that, how does that relate to opportunities in arts? Hmm. It's, it's a tricky one. I would say like, uh, when, when it comes to the visual arts in, in Nigeria and in the world, mm -hmm. because these are two markets. Yeah, two different markets. Uh, yeah, two different course. markets. So, uh, if, if I'm to compare Nigerian market to the world market or to other African country markets, you mm -hmm. know, it's, it's a different, it's, it's tricky, different. It's, yeah. it's broad. broad. So I would like to just step it down to Nigeria because this is where I, I understand the market, at least to an extent. Yeah. So um, for me, the entrepreneurship rate here is still, is still lacking a lot. Okay. Because there is, there is so much factors affecting you as an entrepreneur. Of course. So um, price, how do, you how do you moderate price? Then how do you know what to sell? Where do you sell to? So even the, the economic factor is there where people can't even afford what you're selling. True. Yeah, so True. But, but at times I just feel like we, we need to start from somewhere because mm -hmm. years, some years ago, I wasn't selling at any price. When wow. I say any price, I wasn't selling. Like by the time I sell, what I'm even getting from my cost of production and everything, it doesn't really it doesn't want run, it. Yeah. yeah, but one thing I tell people is that um, the, the the skill is not how you have to like dwell on. You have to still like talk to people as an entrepreneur. You have to look at your web. Who are, who are those people you need to sell your... Because your product is not for everybody. True. Yeah, that's one thing I tell people. It, it might be... I'm not saying because you are poor, it's for the rich, it's for... No. It's not for everybody. At times, I even get shocked when people who I, I just be like, can this guy afford me? 
and they just buy 10 of your works. You just wow. be like, wow. Those days are encouraging, but I'm talking mm -hmm. about the days where, as an entrepreneur, right, you, you are not even selling anything. Mm -hmm. And in, in Nigeria, we are still struggling a lot, mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. Like uh, for, for the for news, artists. for artists, basically. And for those that are even coming up, mm -hmm. that are not there yet, the struggle is much. Mm -hmm. It's getting better gradually, but it's still, it's still much. And I feel there is a lot of work to do okay. for us all, yeah. Okay, so as, an, as a young Nigerian, um, just as you mentioned, you have a, a history and, and a background mm -hmm. of how you started. Yeah. Um, I see a lot of different beautiful artworks here, especially the one behind you. It's super complicated, <laughs> Thank you, yeah. you know, and I, it, it just um, triggers me to want to ask what inspires you to, uh, you spoke about a few factors, but I'll, you know, sitting on your space, this looks like a place you spend a lot of time. Yeah, like... So I'm just looking at what really inspires I know every painting has a story. Yeah, so sure. what, what, how do you create stories or how do you create this painting? What comes to your mind when you first pick up a pen and decide to sketch? What comes to your mind? Thank you very much. Like you know, a lot of people feel like the artists, like the artists just pick up the pen and start drawing. For me, it doesn't work for me that oh, way. Okay. Um, most of my painting is like my life. It's like my story. It's like other people's story. And how do I relate with other people's story? Like you're here now. Mm -hmm. I think before we started this conversation, we've had a little bit of talk. So from there, maybe one day, I might just think, oh, well, this thing that Josephine is telling me is very interesting. Let me go deep mm -hmm. into it. So I started looking at it, putting your picture into the larger picture. How does this thing affecting this particular person? How does it affect the larger society? Yeah. Okay, how do they embrace it? If it's even up. So from the concepts, from the conceptual idea to, to jotting it down, it's more like me telling my own story. Yeah. But one thing about me telling the stories mm -hmm. is that I, I, I just don't want to tell stories. I just don't want to tell just any other story. I want to tell a story that affects our people here. I can't be talking about Obama. Okay. I, I don't know if you understand. <laughs> I yeah. get what you're I, saying. I want to tell a story that even the Nigerian community can relate with. And when I'm outside there, they'll just be like, wow, so this is what is happening over there. Yeah. What can we do to all to do? So those are the things that inspires my work, day-to-day okay. -day activities, people's expression. Yeah. Because at times, you just look at people, they'll be smiling. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? But, but in between the between yeah. the smile, like there is something worrying them. So those are those things I I combine in my I conjure in my um, in my paintings mm -hmm. day to day, like, every minute. Believe me, as you are seated here now, mm -hmm. you might be thinking about one hundred and forty things, mm -hmm. and I'm just seeing one expression. But for me as an artist, I see beyond the what everybody just wants to see. Yeah. And those those things they they are not talking about those things gets my interest and I want to put them out there. Okay, that's quite interesting. Yeah. So um, I'm sure you did not just wake up one day and started painting. Mm. So I would like to know what inspired you to go into this space. In my family, my immediate family, I'm like the first mm -hmm. to be an artist, like a visual artist. I never knew that hearts could be this big. Mm. Like the, okay. the space I'm the in now, like, I, like in my whole life, I can never imagine that I'm here. Is it, and I could even yeah. meet the kind of people, artists, even non-artists, business owners, and, mm -hmm. that I'm meeting now through by just painting and drawing. Okay. Then I used to, be, even before I got admission, I used to think like, I mean, I love being there. I want to be an But my own type of heart is that I, I must do mass comm and every other thing. Okay. Do you know it took me like four years to realize that I can actually... Wanted to do art? Like to paint, like this thing will give me money. I, I don't know if you're like... <laughs> If you're talking about a lawyer, okay, Washington, like a artist, like I just be like, okay, man. Okay. So um, I tried several times, like mm -hmm. to get admission, it was difficult. But I, I bless God for giving me the opportunity to go to Federal College of Education. Now, I, I need to elaborate on that because this, this, this will help a whole lot of entrepreneurs that are looking for bigger opportunities to go into some like academic settings and financially they might not have that capability okay. or their finances might not be that okay. Mm -hmm. People ignore, when I was looking at schools, mm -hmm. Federal College of Education was like secondary school to me. How can I, how can I go to another secondary school? Mm -hmm. But it was, an, um, it was a wrong idea from outside. Okay. When I got that, I did Juni Ben, the admission wasn't given to me. I felt very sad. Yabatek, the admission, they had issues, blah, blah, blah. 
Then someone else said, guy, go to Federal College where you chose as the last. And I went there. My name was on the 11. I just like, God, so I'm going to be a teacher in my life. <laughs> no, no, you get I was just like, God, so oh this is, God. as when I saw the so name, funny. like I was happy that I'm mad. But when I just, so I'm going to be a teacher in my life. Mm -hmm. Then when I told one of my mentors, his name is David Oyakilome, he's a fashion minister, he finished from doing that. He was like, guy, Start from somewhere. Yeah. Because he, he was, he, he studied English in Junior Land, but now he's one of the biggest, I'm seeing the biggest, one of the most expensive um, suit maker at Badan yeah. in Nigeria presently. So when you're talking about the likes of Yomi Casual, mm -hmm. you can actually rate him okay. at that rate. So he was doing as a guy, no, go. I studied English in Junior Land, but today, man, I'm doing good here, that go. Yeah. But when I went to FC to Akoka, man, my life changed. Like wow. everything, because they had to take take you through the basic steps. Steps. And one thing that really helped us is that even entrepreneurship um, was a big cause that you must do as an artist. Mm. Apart from you being a teacher, so at the end of the day, I realized that I can actually teach mm -hmm. and also be an a, be a studio artist. So at the same time. At the same time. So it, the journey doesn't. It, it didn't just start from here. Uh, like I always advise, go to places where they will teach you the intricate of what you what want, you to, want do. to learn. Yeah, what you want to learn, what you want to develop. And there, there are stages to this thing. So for me, FCT Akoka was the starting point and everything just changed. changed. Yeah, okay. like so then when I moved into Unilag, um, it was it was another ball game. Very interesting because I get to meet a whole lot. You know, in a class, you can be sitting with the with the daughter of a governor, a governor. The, yeah. <laughs> so we share idea and I was I wasn't coming from a place that it's so big I was coming from a very a humble background, a very humble background. so meeting those people then sharing ideas it gave me more insights with what I could do with my art. your own life do you yeah. understand? so that's one thing I always tell people that wherever you see yourself wherever you want to start as some entrepreneur yeah believe me start, as in just starts that's the point. Then go to the right places that will guide you through because you need guidance. Okay. Yeah, so that's 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 my take on that question. Okay. All right then. So my next question is what is the most outstanding moment in your business as an entrepreneur living in Nigeria? Like what would you say was the moment that blew you away, you know? <laughs> How do I say it? Like it's like getting to another man's country mm -hmm. and it just like who is the artist mm -hmm. that made this crazy world? Mm -hmm. And you just appeared, you just be like, guy, we are doing more business with you. Wow. Now, do you get like, um, mm -hmm. like I told you before, like I've traveled. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've, I've, Give us the gist. Give yeah, us I've, the gist. I've, I've traveled. <laughs> yeah, I've traveled. Like um, the last exhibition I had before the last one I had in December is, is with Good West Africa. Like I said, like I'm just a studio artist. What I do, is to paint. Mm -hmm. This is me, two, four, seven. Whatever I'm doing academically, anything Kali, whatever I'm doing to enhance myself is just for, to, for the arts, for the heart, like to develop these ideas and to put this these ideas it, out there. Yeah. But it's it's not just my job to put the work out, out there. I you understand. Know? Yeah, there are people who whose job is to talk about us. As I am, as I'm seated here, somebody somebody's talking about my work somewhere. Okay. I don't know if you understand. I understand it, what takes you're time. it doesn't start in a day. And before today, when I was in Junior Lag, I realized this earlier. Mm -hmm. And I think that's one thing I want to advise the young artists that as much as you're painting, you're creating, you're creating fantastic work, search for people whose job is to talk about you out there. Yeah, you might not be making as much as I, like, like I told you before, like, like five years ago. <laughs> And I don't even want to talk about that story. No, no, that's story in, to in terms of pricing, man, just like, yeah. no, I, I'm not joking. Like literally, there was a work I did. My my one of my portraits I did. I could remember that was the first money I got in my life mm -hmm. on artwork. I did that work for two thousand and uh, two thousand seven hundred naira. <laughs> yeah, I won't lie to you. It oh was a God. portrait. Like okay. it was a portrait. When I, I was happy mm -hmm. that somebody is paying, paying for your work. To me, it was much. Mm -hmm. Forget what any, but forget anybody whatever. Would say. But then it was it was okay. one thing that actually opened my mind to like, man, if this person can actually buy, buy this, this yeah. Or, believe me, the two five was the free money for the little <laughs> thing I did. Then two hundred naira to transport myself. I had to even trek. 
Because where I did the painting was from Akoka to Lagos Island. 200 okay. Naira can do nothing. So, you get, so I had to trek in between. Mm -hmm. But, you know, the joy of presenting the work, and believe me, from that work, I got, I got more than 70K works because people were saying it. So I now sat down and I was like, oh, well, if this thing, that was like five years ago, if yeah. this thing can be like this, mm -hmm. then there is, there is a future for yeah, me. There's because a future. other people are seeing it and they want to do. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you yeah, understand. understand. So, so I've, I've been to, I've been like, um, like when we were in Dakar, because I just, I just finished a contract with um, Good West Africa. Yeah. That's like the first um, good mining company like in the whole of West Africa. They are, they are really huge. Uh, we taught the whole West Africa. Then our last show was in, was in um, Nigeria, in Lagos, at mm -hmm. uh, West Wing building. It, it was amazing. Okay. The acceptance from, you know when you are still here mm -hmm. and you just feel like ah, it's my people, it's Nigerians, they will give you the vibe. Mm -hmm. No, no, when, when I was out there, the vibe was, I was like, God, I don't know if you understand. I understand I mean. where like, the recognition was, was amazing. Yeah, it was yeah. really amazing. Like, it really made me feel very humble. I was yeah. humble. Like, like man, <laughs> there is, there, we are rich. Yeah. Believe me. But it's just that, man, there are a whole lot of situations where people, most people cannot even afford. It's somebody that has a lot of money that would think they want to buy artwork. True. You know? So most Nigerians can't really afford this. So we just go for those that can afford us, actually, mm -hmm. for now. Mm -hmm. So and we pray that, man, everybody gets better. Eventually. Yeah, eventually, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's true. Um, so you talked, earlier you spoke about challenges, you know, different forms of challenges. Now, mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur, as an artist in Nigeria, or as an entrepreneur and a, and a, a painter, you know, how do you stay inspired? You've spoken about lots of challenges. What inspires you to keep going, to keep moving forward? With this. Thank you very much. I, I don't I don't like calling the name of other artists mm -hmm. when when I'm talking about myself. But there is no way I won't talk about them mm -hmm. because these artists are what bring life to what I do. These artists are they've been there. Mm -hmm. They've I've seen when like it's like I, I go on a visit to see like uh, Duke Asidiri, Edosa. These are Big guys our guys. Like yeah. they've been in the game for like forty years, mm -hmm. and and you meet them. And their story will just be like, so this thing I'm passing through now. They already went through it. As it but when you hear the amount they are selling their work, I have a senior colleague, his name is Yusuf Drew Dollar, a very fantastic artist. You get, I get to talk about, I get to meet these people. So one thing as an entrepreneur is that you must understand that you're not alone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. And, and I feel like that's what kills most entrepreneurs. Because they just get isolated in one way or the other. As they are pushing, they are not even saying, okay, whose story can I relate with can my I story? And people are there. Mm -hmm. People are there who can guide you through. So when I say mentor, because mentorship in Nigeria too can be tricky. Can be tricky. Yeah. Very tricky. So a whole lot of people are either, I don't want to go and be this one and it will now turn me into slave for life. That's, that's another factor that I don't want to go into. Okay. But you, you need them. Yeah. You need people who have passed through what you're passing through. I have, I have someone I really love so much. His mm -hmm. name is Dr. Alabi. And most of these people I'm talking about, I don't paint like them. Like, I can say it anywhere. I don't paint like them. But I passed through them. I was at Universal Studio when I was doing my, um, my IT when I was in Unilag. Do you know, I was teaching us at that time because I just finished from FCT Akoka. So I just felt like, so I would just waste my teaching experience mm -hmm. like so nobody will benefit from me so i had to teach and that was what i was using to actually sponsor myself to school also yeah so i knew as at that point this couldn't pay my rent mm -hmm. this this I, I can't afford a car with this i can't afford the <laughs> rent i can't buy a land with this you get as at then so what i did was that okay i have a teaching experience okay let me give back to these parents let mm -hmm. me give back to children and i was teaching i was teaching within christ redeemer secondary school yeah um, um, home science. I was teaching, I was the art teacher in home science, and I was even able to even give them other art teachers to their other schools. Mm -hmm. Like for like two years, that school didn't even have an art, an art teacher. So you can imagine. Yeah. So I saw that and I was able, but when I went for my IT, do you know you are, you are, I'm a student, and maybe what I'm collecting then was just 80 pence mm -hmm. as salary. Mm -hmm. And where I was doing IT, you just see a young man just doing one work, and you just say, I just received 200 k <laughs> I'm not joking, like a collector will walk in mm -hmm. and you just bam, ah, bam, ah. 
I don't know if you understand. Like, you will be with them or guys. You will be seeing, damn, like you're about <laughs> one million, two million. Two million. <laughs> ah, it just be like, ah. So when I was doing IT, it was it was a bit challenging, and that's yeah. one thing I can never, I can never and ever forget. People who actually understood like that. Some people could be going through a whole a lot, lot of life challenges because I had to go in between school, in between work, then in between IT. It mm -hmm. was tough. Yeah. So, but at my IT place, they understood. So most times, even on Sunday, Saturday, Sundays, yeah. I'm always there. So they understood that. So that was what changed my experience. That mean, this is the last time. This is the last semester. That was I was in year three. That. I'm gonna do teaching or I'm ever gonna work for anybody. Mm -hmm. Because I saw how people, this guy, they collect salary of general manager in one day. <laughs> God. So I realized that there was a lot more to do. So then I started building up my story. What do I want to talk about? Because it's another thing, like, and I always tell people, you cannot meet everybody's need. True. So like, so for me, I had to search within myself. What story do I want to tell? Okay. How do I want to tell my story? Which places? And as I tell you now, there is there are two galleries like I really want to feature with, like yeah. I really want to have an exhibition with. Yeah. But for now, do you understand? I've not had that exhibition with mm -hmm. them. I've done a whole, but I wish I could do an exhibition, exhibition. with them. Do you understand? Yeah. But I just feel like everything is stages. Yeah. I don't want to mention the name now, yeah. so that it doesn't feel like yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I feel like everything is, is stages. And you have to learn how to like just cut your step out of time. Yeah, like just take as no no rush. Yeah. No rush. Understand the business. Communicate with other people. Mm -hmm. Because I'm telling you, what I'm saying this thing, communicate, is that there was a time I felt like my heart wasn't going nowhere. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. And I met with this man called um Edosa Guigo. Do you know it took us back to and Luckily for us, he, was, he came to the studio to come and paint with us. So he was yeah. painting for like, something happened, he had to be in Lagos and he was painting. And talking to this man, the, everything this man was saying was like the present thing I was facing as a day. And this man was talking as far back, the year I was not born, like 1980 something. Mm -hmm. And he was telling me the exact thing. He was explaining me details by details. And he was trying to tell us that, I'm painting now, now is what you guys are seeing. But, mm -hmm. Then, so that thing really dingered me that, okay, I'm on the right path. Okay. All right. I James, so you, you need encouragement as an entrepreneur. All right. Yeah. All right. Thanks very much. Um, Thank so, you. yeah, the, my last question to you is this. Have you ever turned down a client's job and uh, why? If you have turned down a client's job, why? <laughs> <laughs> like I said before, somebody that gave a uh, two seven. <laughs> I guess I did. Do you understand? Uh, yeah. I feel like, ah, far right. <laughs> I have. Uh, it's, it's, it's sad. Sometimes I feel bad I have to turn people down. Like, mm -hmm. A lot. I'm not joking. Because, yeah. man, because sometimes whatever you're seeing here is rated in dollars. Mm -hmm. I won't lie to you. Like, so when I'm buying a material, I'm buying them at the rate of dollars. I, not, none of the things I'm doing here is made here. Okay. So I have to buy them in dollars. So imagine I'm buying just one thing out of a whole lot of things I want to do, and I'm giving you a price that won't even meet up. How do, how do, I, how do I put them back into my business? So it's, and one thing I would tell visual artists also is that you must understand that it's business you are doing. Yes. Because most visual artists, they don't see it as business. They just see it as talent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you guys should not just come and just see this, is this by start? No. And if you look at the trend of exhibitions I've done so far, mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know if I've exhibited with the gallery. I can't for you to know how bad. I prefer because my strategy is to exhibit with companies who have stories that I can talk about. Oh wow. You you understand yeah. you, you understand the, the trick in my own story now. For now, I'm looking at companies that have stories that I can jump on. Okay. Then I can say it visually. Everybody's okay. They are doing the promotion for me. I'm creating the work. I'm doing promotion for my because I promote. I'm telling you, as at this stage now, like then, I, I do everything myself. Yourself, but like, yeah. do you understand? So it's it's it's, it's just. It's it's been a journey. <laughs> it's been a journey. Like I, I just feel like this interview, like if you are to have it, you just dedicate like two a whole days, day. Yeah, we'll start <laughs> I understand that, but we definitely cannot take the whole day. Yeah, okay, okay, so we move down to the game time, hmm. and this game I call it Peter Piper. 
So I would say, I, I'm going to tell you how it's played. It, it, you know, I'm only scared called, of game. It's called, hey. like, calm down, calm down, be calming down. It's called Tongue Twister and it's called, um, the, the name of the game is Peter Piper. So I'll go first, then you go. Hey. So it's Peter Piper. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled pepper. A peck of pickled pepper Peter Piper picked. If Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled pepper, then where is the peck of pickled pepper Peter Piper picked? Go. I don't, I don't feel that much. <laughs> Come on, just give it a try. Give it a try. Give I, was it a just, try. I was just thinking like, <laughs> like I'm going to be dating. And, ah, God. I, I'm not joking. Go ahead. Like, go ahead. Give hey, it a try. Give it a try. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled pepper. Jesus. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled pepper. A peck of pickled Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Peter Popeye picked a peck of pickle pepper. A peck of pickle pepper, Peter Pie Puppy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. All right, it's been great. I'm done. It's been great having you on the show. I'm done. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm, I'm so glad uh, Thank you. this interview went Thank through. Thank you. All right, guys, that brings us to the end of today's episode. We do hope that you have enjoyed this artistic journey with us today. And of course, if you have not been following up the previous episodes please go and follow up the previous episodes before you come back to watch this one anyway guys for more on finance and improving yourself financially you could visit our website on www.prosharing.com keep watching